So, uh, if you calculate signal to noise ratio, that is ultimately quantifying the total signal power to the noise power, right, where you are con considering the signal power also, right. Uh, because if you just calculate the noise, your thermal noise is independent of the power, right. So, you want to have a quantity which is dependent on the po signal power as a ratio of signal power to the noise, right. So, signal to noise ratio is the, sorry, this is average, right. Uh, I square average signal power which is proportional to the square of the current divided by noise power, noise power is proportional to square of sigma, sigma square. So, that is this variance will have sigma short square plus sigma thermal square, sigma short square is this, sigma thermal square is this which is your 4 k T by R L times delta F times noise figure of the amplifier. Right. This is this one and of course, the uh, square of, uh, so, so well, there is already an average symbol here, that is why it is I square AC here, right. Uh, square of the current is uh, square of RD times P in square, where P in now represents the average power falling on the receiver, right. So, this represents the average power on the receiver. And as I said earlier, in practical cases, thermal noise dominates over the short noise. Uh, let us, before that let us talk about how do you reduce your thermal noise? What can you do to reduce your thermal noise? I can reduce the temperature. What else can you do to reduce this sigma t square? Increase load resistance. That is very practical way of doing it increase the load resistance, increase the load resistance and of course, if you have an amplifier in the path, reduce the noise figure of those amplifiers. Can you reduce bandwidth? You cannot reduce bandwidth beyond a certain limit, you need a certain bandwidth to detect your signal. So, use optimal bandwidth, at the same time reduce your temperature if possible or do not allow your circuit to heat up, put it on a cold plate or put it on a, if it is getting heated up, put it on a PEC, thermoelectric cooler and so on. That is how you will reduce the thermal noise. But can you bring the thermal noise to uh, negligibly 0 value? Unless you bring the temperature down to 0 Kelvin, it is not possible to bring the thermal noise to 0. What about short noise? How can you reduce short noise? Q, you cannot do anything about it. Responsivity is that of a detector, you cannot change that. Um, Input power you can reduce and of course, you can reduce a dark current. But input power you will would have already reduced to a point where the receiver is operating at the minimum required power, right. So, when you have short noise and thermal noise in my system, the question is would I, uh, would it be desirable to operate in the short noise dominated regime or thermal noise dominated regime? This is clear operating regimes, right. When your power is large, you are in the short noise uh, dominated regime. When your power is small, you are in the thermal noise dominated regime. Which one would you like to operate? So, which is the fundamental limitation? You, whenever you have um, trying to detect optical power, right, you, your fundamental limitation in the noise is the quantum limit, which is your uh, limit because of the fact that there are photons and these photons have a certain quantum mechanical nature and because of that there is a certain statistics. So, that is the fundamental limit and you would like to operate it in the fundamental limit, in the quantum limit and not in the classical limit. Classical limit is that given by the thermal noise. So, ideally it is desirable to operate the receiver in the short noise limited regime, which means sigma thermal is much, much smaller than sigma short. You would like to operate it this way. But let us try to take a look at how to operate in this regime or how to operate in the uh, thermal uh, limit, thermal noise limited uh, operation and how to get the, what happens in each of these uh, regimes. So, this is our uh, total uh, SNR, I have just repeated the formula here. This is your short noise again and this is your thermal noise. Suppose it is thermal noise limited system, if it is a thermal noise limited system, it means that 
sigma short noise is much much smaller than sigma thermal noise which means that this can be ignored the power levels are such that this first term can be ignored you have only the second term in that case the snr would be what rd p in square divided by sigma t square and sigma t is 4 kt by r delta f noise figure now how do you improve the snr in this case you know that the snr now so these are all bunch of uh, cons well not this one these are all constants delta f you have optimized okay you are not using any extra delta f uh, fn is uh, the noise figure so you try to make your noise figure of the amplifier small it's proportional to p in square and proportional to rl but this p in square is cannot be a very large number because if it is a very large number it means that the short noise will start dominating so p in is a small number you don't have a lot of so given a p in the only thing you can change to improve this is increase your rl so that's what snr varies as p in square snr improved by increasing the load impedance rl so that is why you use trans impedance amplifier trans impedance amplifier in the front end where with with some op amps or you know you, you usually use a, a current to voltage converter now what happens if it is a uh, uh, before this what happens if it is a short noise limited system so in this uh, picture in this uh, formula now your sigma t square becomes zero you will have only this term and so in that case so snr will be rd square sorry p in square what was the first term 2q rd p in plus dark current times delta f if i ignore the dark current i will just have rd p in divided by 2q delta f one rd p in will get cancelled right now i know that rd is eta q divided by h nu so i am substituting rd as eta q divided by h nu so this q cancels so i have 2 h nu delta f now this p in i am going to write it as bit energy divided by bit uh, rate how if i have a p in as the high i mean when you say short noise you are talking about the high right so you have p in times your uh, bit duration symbol duration p in times your symbol duration is going to be my energy so p in uh, divided by bit rate uh, b is my bit rate because one by bit rate is giving give, will give me my symbol duration or bar, symbol rate will give me my symbol duration this is equal to eb so p in i can write it as eb times my symbol rate and because now this is energy i can now write it as this energy i can write it as number of photons time h nu times b divided by 2 h nu so my h nu cancels off uh, what i end up is uh, having eta np number of photons b divided by 2 delta f and if i say that i operate at a bandwidth which is equal to bit rate divided by 2 i'm just some optimal operating condition i'm saying that my bandwidth is bit rate divided by 2 essentially saying that if i were to operate 10 gigabits per second i am i need to have a bandwidth of only nrz will require a bandwidth of only half of the bit rate so if i do that then this is eta np otherwise i have to retain this that's all okay this is again to get an order of magnitude uh, idea now let's say the quantum efficiency is 1 eta is your quantum efficiency quantum efficiency remember it's a number of electrons produced divided by the number of photons falling 
and let us say there is one electron produced for each photon that is falling in the system. Then my uh, eta is equal to 1 which means my SNR is equal to just the number of photons. So, if I were to get an SNR of 20 dB, SNR of 100, all what I need is You, you got SNR is equal to number of photons in my bit 1. That is a relation when you are operating in the short noise limited case. Simply means that if I need an SNR of 100 which is 20 dB, I need only 100 photons, 1550 nanometer, 10 Gbps system. SNR required is uh, 20 which means number of photons is 100, number of photons required is 100. So, the power required in the one state would be 100 multiplied by Hc by lambda energy of one photon. So, this is the energy, how do you go to power? You just wrote this energy divided by bit duration which is 10 into uh, 10 gbps is 0 0.1 nanosecond what is the answer can do this as a homework and you can also tell me uh, what is the SNR in this system uh, for a P in of let us say 100 micro watt and R L is 1 kilo ohm bandwidth is 10 gigahertz or bandwidth is 5 gigahertz to be in line with the previous one R d is 1.2. So, this is a thermal noise uh, operated domain calculate the SNR for this. What was it earlier for that uh, 100 photons did you end up? roughly around 130 nanowatt. That is all the power that is required to operate in the, uh, to get an SNR of 100. Signal to noise ratio of 20 dB or 100, that is a large SNR. For that SNR, you need only 130 nanowatt provided you are operating in the short noise uh, limited system. But practically you do not end up you your thermal noise when your power is 130 nanowatt the thermal noise starts dominating right. So, you need to find a solution for that. So, we stop at this point what we did today is quantified the noise and we quantified what is SNR and we defined short noise limited system thermal noise limited system. Mm -hmm.